let lambda be a lamination. An invariant measure is a family of Borel measures on the local leaf spaces, which are compatible on the overlaps of product charts. We can and do think of an invariant measure as a measure on transversals, which is invariant under leafwise homotopy. Invariant measures are very closely related to the idea of amenability in the theory of groups. We define a Follner sequence to be a family of compact submanifolds of leaves of our lamination, such that the volume of a neighborhood of the boundary is small compared to the volume of the submanifold. Foldless sequences give rise to invariant transverse measures. Let lambda be a compact lamination and let u sub i contained in leaves lambda sub i be a Follner sequence. We can define a measure on transversals in the following way. For each transversal tau, define the measure nu sub i of tau to be equal to the number of intersections of tau with u sub i divided by the volume of u sub i. We claim that if the u sub i are a Follner sequence, some subsequence of the nu sub i converges weakly to a non-trivial invariant transverse measure nu. Here's the proof. First of all, we need to show that the nu sub i have a weak limit. To do this, we need to show that for each transversal tau, the value of nu sub i of tau is uniformly bounded. Why should this be true? Well, for each fixed transversal tau, the intersection of tau with any leaf is uniformly separated. This means we can control the number of intersections of tau with any submanifold u in terms of the volume of a neighborhood of u. The reason for this is that tau cannot intersect any given leaf in points which are too close together, or it would not be a transversal. Now, for any fullness sequence u sub i, the volume of a neighborhood of u sub i is comparable to the volume of u sub i in that the ratio goes to 1. Therefore, the value of nu sub i on any transversal tau is uniformly bounded and the nu sub i has some weak limit which we call nu. We shall now show that nu is an invariant transverse measure. To show that nu is an invariant transverse measure, we need to show that nu of tau is equal to nu of tau prime whenever tau prime is obtained by leafwise homotopy from tau. It suffices to do this when the tracks of the homotopy have bounded size, let's say distance 1. Nu sub i of tau is the number of intersections of tau with ui divided by the volume of ui, and nu sub i of tau prime is the number of intersections of tau prime with ui divided by the volume of ui. Since tau prime is obtained from tau by a leafwise homotopy through paths of distance at most 1, the intersections of tau and of tau prime with ui all match except possibly for those which are within distance 1 of the boundary. The number of those is comparable to the number of intersections of tau with the one neighborhood of the boundary. When we divide through by the volume of ui, the result must go to zero by the definition of a Follner sequence. This shows that nu is an invariant transverse measure. We now have a recipe to construct invariant transverse measures. Whenever we can find Follner sequences, we can find invariant transverse measures. One important example is when the Follner sequence is contained in a single leaf which is to say we have a single leaf with the property that it has a collection of subsets where the size of the boundary of the subset is small.
compared to the size of the subset itself. In particular, any leaf of sub-exponential growth contains a Follner sequence. One important special case is laminations with one-dimensional leaves. A one-dimensional leaf always has sub-exponential growth. In fact, its growth is at most linear. Therefore, every minimal set in a one-dimensional lamination supports a non-trivial invariant transverse measure. A more interesting example concerns Riemann surface laminations with parabolic leaves. It turns out that any parabolic leaf in a Riemann surface lamination contains a Follner sequence, and therefore the lamination admits an invariant transverse measure. Let's prove this. Let's introduce some notation. We'll call our leaf lambda, and let's suppose we have a conformal map phi from the complex plane C to lambda. Let's denote the ball of radius r in the complex plane by b sub r. And let's denote by a of r the area of its image, the area of phi of b sub r, and by l of r the length of the image of its boundary, the length of phi of the boundary of br. Furthermore, let's let f denote the norm of d of phi. Because phi is conformal, it scales lengths by f and area by f squared. So a of r is the integral over br of f squared. We can write this as an iterated integral, the integral from s equals 0 to r of the integral over the boundary of b sub s of f squared d length dr. Taking derivatives, a prime of r is equal to the integral over the boundary of br of f squared d length. By the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, this is greater than or equal to 1 over 2 pi r times the square of the integral over the boundary of br of f d length. But this is exactly equal to L squared divided by 2 pi r. So we get the fundamental inequality a prime is greater than or equal to L squared over 2 pi r. Let's suppose that the sets phi of b sub r do not contain a Follner sequence. This means that L of r is greater than or equal to c times a of r for some positive constant c. we can choose some positive number r sub 0 and integrate a prime over a squared from r 0 to infinity. On the one hand, this is equal to 1 over a of r 0 minus 1 over a infinity, which is a finite number. On the other hand, it is greater than or equal to c squared times the integral from r 0 to infinity of a prime over l squared. Now, our fundamental inequality implies that this latter integral is greater than or equal to c squared times the integral from r zero to infinity of dr over two pi r, but that latter integral is infinite, so we get a contradiction, and the contradiction implies that the phi of the b sub r contain a Follner sequence as claimed. The idea of an invariant transverse measure can be translated into the language of functional analysis. In this translation, the resulting object is known as a foliation cycle. Let's let AP of lambda denote the space of leafwise smooth P forms. If our leaves are oriented of dimension n, then any element of a n of lambda defines a family of leafwise measures. Given a leafwise n form omega and an invariant transverse measure nu, we can take the product locally 
to get a measure on lambda that can be integrated to get a number. Let's call this I sub nu of omega. More precisely, our invariant transverse measure nu can be written as a family of measures nu sub i on the local leaf spaces x sub i in the local product charts rn times x sub i. On each local chart, we can take the measure omega times nu sub i. If f sub i is a smooth partition of unity subordinate to the cover by these local charts, then i sub nu of omega is the sum over i of the integral over x sub i of the integral over r to the n of f i omega d nu i. Properties of integration have the following two important consequences. If omega is a strictly positive n-form, then so is the number i sub nu of omega. Furthermore, by applying Stokes' theorem leafwise, the value of i sub nu on an exact form, d alpha, must equal zero. Any linear functional on the leafwise n-forms with these two properties is called a foliation cycle. We have seen that invariant transverse measures give rise to foliation cycles. Dennis Sullivan introduced the theory of foliation cycles and proved that this is an equivalence, that foliation cycles are equivalent to invariant transverse measures. Using this, he proved that a lamination admits an invariant transverse measure if and only if there is no strictly positive exact n-form. The proof is very easy. In the space of leafwise n-forms, let's let c denote the cone of positive forms. Since i nu of an exact form must be equal to zero, but i nu is positive on a positive form, there can be no invariant transverse measure if there is a positive exact form. On the other hand, the cone of positive forms being a cone is convex, and therefore if the cone of positive forms does not intersect the space of exact forms, by the hahn banach theorem, we can find a linear functional which vanishes on the exact forms and is positive on the cone of positive forms. Such a linear functional is a foliation cycle, and therefore there exists an invariant transverse measure.